When I was eight years old, my mother gave me a book about Joan of Arc. As I read the story, I became fascinated by this 17-year-old medieval, 17-year-old peasant girl from medieval France. How could she raise an army, crown a prince, kick the English out of France, and was willing to die for what she believed in? Being Irish, I particularly like the last part about kicking the English out of France. <laughs> And my mother told me, I kept going back to her and saying, Mom, do you see she did this, she did this. I was absolutely amazed by Joan. And what it was fantastic was, it was the first time I had ever seen a woman leader who had a mission, who had a vision, and who was ready to die for what she believed in. And I knew then that I too wanted to become a woman leader and to help other women leaders. I have a 13-year-old daughter and an 11-year-old son. And the hard truth is that today, if both of them went to look for funding for their business, my son would be 70% more likely to get funding than my daughter, just because of his gender. In 2012, I went to London to an event organized by the Cherie Blair Foundation. And a fantastic woman entrepreneur there, she said, my greatest challenge was access to funding for my business. And a light bulb went off in my head and I said, really? Was it more difficult for women to find money for their business just because they were women? 2014, MIT and the Harvard Business School did an interesting experiment. They took a pitch deck of slides for a startup and they gave it to two different groups of investors. The only difference was that in what, for one group, there was a male voiceover, a male voice, and for the other group, there was a woman vo voiceover. The slides were exactly the same. And when the researchers asked the investors which company they were more likely to invest in, two thirds of investors said that they were more likely to invest in the male entrepreneur. The content was exactly the same. So, for the past three years, I have been talking to women entrepreneurs from all over the world, from North America, Latin America, across Europe. I wanted to find out for myself, was this really true? Was it harder for women? And what was interesting was, of course, looking for money for your business is difficult for all entrepreneurs. And the hard truth is that it is harder for women entrepreneurs. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was 17. And when I was 21, I moved to France, Joan's country. And one day I went to a bank account, I went to, uh, sorry, I went to a bank, and I needed to open two bank accounts, so a personal account and a company, uh, a, a savings account. And I said to the bank manager, one day I'm going to open up my own company, so I'm saving up for the capital. And he laughed in my face. <laughs> Needless to say, I did change bank. <laughs> my husband is a pilot, and I've been very lucky to be able to go into the cockpit for takeoff and for landing. I'm one of those lucky people. And you know what? It's not just all autopilot. They do quite a bit of work. But what's very interesting is I noticed how the two pilots communicate with each other. When one pilot has to tell something important to the other pilot before briefing in takeoff or landing, he says, first of all, are you ready for briefing? He needs to make sure that the other pilot is fully available, giving his full attention to take this important information. And he will wait to make sure that he has the full attention. Because in that cockpit, as you know, sometimes you have to make decisions in seconds, and communication is very, very important. So, are you ready for briefing? Yes. So why is it harder for women entrepreneurs to get funding? Today, only 5% of venture capital goes to women-led businesses. 5%. We have a long way to go. Today, 4% of venture capitalists and 20% of business angels are women. 
So what does it mean? It means that most of the money is in the hands of the men. Yet, the research shows that women-led technology firms have 35% higher return on investment and 12% higher revenue than male-led technology firms. That venture capital funds who invest in portfolios with women-led companies do better than venture capital funds with only male companies. So, what's the problem? I strongly believe that the problem is unconscious bias in the hearts and the minds in both women entrepreneurs and investors. So what is unconscious bias? Unconscious bias is when we make decisions or a judgment based on a perception, based on a feeling, but not based on fact or reality. And let's face it, we, we all have bias, don't we? Hands up everybody in this room who's ever had bias. Come on, be honest. Okay. <laughs> but the thing is, when it comes to investing, that a lot of male investors have unconscious bias because they tend to like to invest in what they know. And what do they know? And what are they comfortable with? White male entrepreneurs. The problem is, because of this unconscious bias, they're missing out on a huge opportunity and huge potential. I met one angel investor, and he said, I'm gender neutral. I have no bias. I said, great, so how many companies have you invested in? And he said to me, 12. I said, fantastic. How many of them are women-led? And you know what he said to me? Zero. And I could hear the shock in his voice. He hadn't even realized it. He hadn't even realized it. So what have I learned from speaking to all these great women entrepreneurs and with investors? What they're really saying is, please, listen to me. When women entrepreneurs go looking for funding, they tell me, it's like a dark art. It's intimidating. It's a strange language. I feel as if I'm in a shark-infested pool with only armbands on. I don't know how to look for the right investor. It's like kissing a lot of frogs before you find the prince. <laughs> These are their words. And the thing I've noticed is that the women entrepreneurs tend to have to go for 500 cups of coffee with the wrong people before they find the right investor. Whereas the guy, they go for three cups of coffee with the right people and they find the investor. Why? Because when men and women, we have different networks. And sometimes women find it difficult to ask things directly from people. And so, when you listen carefully to women entrepreneurs, what are they really saying? Are you ready for briefing? Yeah. Okay. So they are saying, please, take me seriously. I am bringing to you an amazing opportunity. It's a different world. I may not look or sound like what you're used to, but hear me out. And what about the investors over here? Now remember, most of them are men, and I love men. So the investors, what are they saying and what are they asking? They're saying, please, listen to me. They're saying, build a relationship with me. I'm not just a checkbook on legs. I also have experience and knowledge and networks to give you. And when you come to see me, please be prepared. Do your homework. I'm going to ask you questions, and I want to know, are you the right person to bring this company forward? Why do you want to solve this problem? And why is it you? And really, when I give you feedback, please don't take it personally. So really, what both of them are saying is, please listen to me. So what does the word invest mean? Well, the Oxford Dictionary gives us three different definitions. The first one is the one we all know, to invest your money into a capital venture or to property in order to get a nice profit. OK, 
Okay, we get that one. The second one is when you invest your time and your energy into doing something and expecting a worthwhile result. The third uh, definition of invest, it comes actually from the medieval French and from Latin, it comes from investir, and that means to clothe, to clothe somebody with authority and power. Interesting, isn't it? And that's why in the past, the kings would have a robe. They would have a, a robe on them because they were invested with power. So my message to you is invest in women entrepreneurs. Invest your time and your energy and your funding because they are so worth it. And they are bringing you amazing opportunities that you're not seeing yet. So what about the world's most famous investor, Warren Buffett? What does he say? Why is he so successful? Well, he says, I'm so successful because I'm only competing with half the population. And I recently interviewed a great angel investor in New York called Adam Quinton, and I asked him, Adam, why do you invest in women entrepreneurs? And he said, Adam, simple, I wanna make money. And he has invested in a lot of companies. And guess what? He's doing very well out of them. And the other great investor, Dave McClure, he's the founder of 500 Startups. And he says, I want to invest in the forgotten population, the most undervalued population, women and minority-led Because there, again, he can see the potential. And in the last five years, he has invested in 1,000 companies. A quarter of them have women founders on them, and 150 of them have women CEOs. So he's on to a good thing, and he's delighted because he's saying, brilliant, the other guys don't get this. I'm going to make loads of money. <laughs> so, The World Economic Forum brings out a global report every year, and it's called the Global Gender Gap Report. And it's interesting because it measures the gap between men and women in four different things, in politics, in education, in health, and the economy. And last year, they said that if we don't change anything, it's going to take 80 years before we have gender parity, 50-50 men and women, in all of those four spheres, 80 years. I went to a women's leadership summit last week, and the organizers, they actually built, as you can see, an ice clock to demonstrate we're gonna melt down those 80 years. We cannot wait 80 years to change. We have to change now. And I certainly don't wanna die before I see my son and my daughter both having access to finance. So. One morning, as I was rushing out to another meeting, my daughter said to me, Mom, spread your talent to the world. <laughs> and I was so touched. I was so touched, and I said, wow, and what does that mean? And it made me think of the famous Belgian singer-songwriter, Jacques Brel. And Jacques said, <clears throat> No, I'm not really going to say, I promise. <laughs> so Jacques said, Le talent n'existe pas. There is no such thing as talent. Le talent, c'est d'avoir envie de faire quelque chose. Talent means really wanting to do something. We see a world where tomorrow there is more gender parity and where we have more women leaders in business and the economy. I see a world where my daughter, my son, your daughter, your nieces and your grandchildren will go and have the same opportunities and access to funding if they both look, want to fund their business. So, are you ready for briefing? <laughs> Women entrepreneurs, believe in yourselves. Think big and ask for more money. Investors, 
investors, invest in women entrepreneurs. Give them your time, your money, and your networks, and you're going to reap great results. And all of us, spread your talent to the world, because together we can reignite the world economy.